Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Reggie. How's it going, guys? What the? What? What? What happened, dude? What? Here, let's do it one more time. Uh, maybe it's dirty. Yeah. <sighs> All right, ready? Yeah. Yeah! yeah, yeah that, All that, right. Okay, that's what it was. <laughs> and we're here to bring you another pickups video, which you guys have been asking for. Are you excited, Jason? I, I'm pumped, dude. I got some good stuff. Yeah, I got some good stuff too, man. Oh man, it's good. You guys are gonna be amazed. Let's check it out. All right, dude, who goes first? You go first. Me? Yeah, you All right. go first this time. All right, well, I am so excited, dude, to have this. So, uh, have you played Next Machina nope. on PS4? I have not, but I've heard a lot of people talk about it. Dude, so first of all, this is the limited run version, and mm -hmm. uh, my good buddy Doug at Limited Run did send me this because I've been talking about this game for forever. Nice. Uh, it, it also came with a really cool t-shirt. It comes with a bunch of, uh, uh, there's, there's like a, some, uh, what the lithographs or whatever they call oh, the little cards, cards okay. yeah a little bit of art plus there's a poster in here uh i love this game it's a twin stick shooter oh okay. and it's kind of similar to robotron uh -huh. but it's all updated and modern looking so they use voxels it looks absolutely amazing oh i had a different impression i thought it was like an online game or something like that but it does have online leaderboards, okay. but but it's but basically it's a twin stick shooter and it's unlike any other you've ever played. It's I'll be honest with you, I think it's probably the best twin stick shooter yeah. ever made. Wow, that's saying a lot. That's saying a lot, man. But I'm telling you, this game is amazing, and getting the collector's edition was like I was I was I was blown away when it showed up in the mail. So nice. Dude. Thank you so much, Doug, for sending me this. Uh, it's it's one of the prizes in my collection now. Hey, cool, cool. Yes. All right, so. A lot of you guys are probably going to laugh at me for this, but, uh, you know, back in junior high school, you know, we had this book called the Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Huh. Uh, for those of you who remember this... Or so so these are novels? These are novels, but they have okay. pictures in them, and the pictures are pretty scary looking. I mean, it'll really? trip you out. They're short stories of, like, of horror, and um, they're very... Uh, they kind of stick with you. Uh, when you read them, you really? know, so wow. yeah, the art is like it's very scary looking So it's like whoa, dude. Like, you have always been into horror, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I have I'm not like so into it Like where you know, like 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 anti any that commercial horror like this Friday 13th stuff Okay, I, I like 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 stuff like scary like ghost stuff. Have stuff you like have you read any Stephen King like classic Stephen King or Clive Barker? Yeah, I think it was a Was it storm of the century or oh, I think that was a that was a newer a Stephen King. I think that that's the, that was one of the ones okay. I read. But uh, you should go back and and I mean you've probably seen some of the movies like Carrie and Firestarter and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. But his books are so good. Did you see the new It? No. Oh, okay. Me. Not yet. I know. I'm dying to because I love the the book as a kid and so. Um, but but anyways, uh, you know, if you like this sort of stuff and you right. want to kind of get sort of, you know the best of what's been out for the last couple uh -huh. of decades. Also, Clive Barker is legit. Like Clive Barker yeah. is Stephen King, but messed up. Whew. Yeah, like really messed up stuff. It's like, cool. <laughs> awesome. Like, what's that movie called? Uh, well, he did Nightbreed and also Hellraiser. Hellraiser, thank you. Yes. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. And actually, Clive Barker directed the first Hellraiser, mm -hmm. which is why it's so good. And it's messed up. Yeah. It with is. the Cenobites and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Cool stuff, man. That's awesome. I'll have to check that out. Thanks, man. Uh, next up for me. Whoa, I'm already seeing <laughs> Yeah, friend of the channel sent these to me. His name's Justin. So these are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for, on the PC. And what's crazy about these dudes is that these are becoming kind of collectible. They are. I, I've been looking for this one for years. I remember when I first saw it when I was 10 years old and I could never find it. And yeah. I looked on eBay recently and no listings for it. So there, what I know about this one, it's more kind of like based off the, the, the comic in the movie. So oh. it's more grittier. Oh, is it? So yo, oh, definitely. Cool. So very cool game. Very unique from what I'm hearing. You know, what's been really interesting is that some of these old Konami PC versions are becoming very collectible. So for instance, mm -hmm. to give you an idea, there's a version of Metal Gear on PC, it mm -hmm. goes for three, four hundred dollars. Really? Yes. Now Ooh. these are not that that expensive. These are about you know sixty to eighty dollars, mm -hmm. but they're definitely some of the more collectible. And the irony is that often the PC version's not very good mm -hmm. because the PCs were so underpowered at the time. Right, right. But if you're a completionist and you're a fan of the turtles, you you got to get these. So this is cool. Hey, look at that cover for Manhattan Missions. I mean, oh. that, that that looks that looks sick. Like that's Doesn't awesome. It? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, very cool. So thanks, thanks so much for sending it. Okay, uh, next game I'm gonna show off here. Well, I didn't show off a game yet. Have, yeah, I haven't shown one off yet, actually. But it's gonna be Fate 
Exilia, uh, the umbrella, umbrella star. I hope I said that right. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I, did, I, I call it Fate Stay Night because of the anime series. But okay. they, they have all these different names for the titles. Dude, this is like a hardbound case. Yeah, it comes with. Um, I think it comes with a. a Art book and it didn't even come with a soundtrack. But I thought oh, something okay. like that would come with a soundtrack, but it came with some kind of shirt. Oh yeah, okay. uh, some cards, oh, some cards. Wow. I think they should throw a soundtrack in there. I, I like how how this is like a really sturdy book though, or, mm -hmm. or case. This yeah, is yeah. nice. One of the more one of the like more collectible t limited like better limited edition type stuff. Yeah. Vita. So that looks nice. Huh. It's also on the PS4 as well, but the game plays like uh, I, I believe a Dynasty Warriors. Uh, haven't haven't played it yet, but from what I've seen them, it plays like Dynasty Warriors. Okay. Like, so yeah, like like endless waves. Of people yeah, yeah, something that you could get into, like more like arcade fun, I would yeah. say. So, yeah, yeah. If you see this game, you're buying new Vita games. This is awesome. I know, and it's in 2018. <laughs> I know. It? Who knew? <laughs> All right. Um, I recently there was the Portland Retro Swap Meet, which is yeah. Well, tell people what that is. Uh, the Portland Swap Meet is pretty much a get together of uh, how the original PRG was uh, used to be back in yeah. the day, because it used to be a swap meet before it got big and like, yeah. a convention. So to keep that tradition going, uh, they have a swap meet like a couple months later, which is which, old school pretty much. Like. Which is cool because uh, it, there are no panels, there mm -hmm. are no. Uh, Exhibitions. There are no arcade machines. It's literally just vendors selling stuff, and so people go there, you know, to swap. You know, you're you're encouraged to trade your games. Mm -hmm. uh, booths, I think, are probably cheaper than normal too. So you see mm -hmm. people at this the swap meet that you normally don't see at the bigger Portland show. Right. Uh, I mention that because I, I'm sure you probably have some stuff to show from that. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and I, I do as well. I do. I, well, I think I do. Yeah, I have a couple things to show from that actually. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, uh, so that little build up is that uh, I got this at the, at the swap meet where uh, just a random DS game that I've never seen before, Space Invaders Extreme 2. Now, I played the first one, mm -hmm. and that's super fun. Basically, for the anniversary, they went and they completely remastered Space Invaders, modernized it, um, just made it exciting again. Because the original Space Invaders is so right. simple, so basic. And so these are, you know, they have, they have power-ups and, and chains that you build. The graphics are all new and kind of uh, trippy, electronic looking. It even has a rumble feature on here, too. Yeah, it's so. pretty... These are really well made and, and they're actually highly reviewed too so uh just to see some random ds game that i had never seen before at swap meet i had to pick it up cool man awesome Heck yeah there. space invaders okay next game and anime i want to show you guys here is hyper area for hmm. the super nintendo now this is the fan translated version uh the game actually came out for super famicom okay um Finally got an English translation like almost 20 years after the game was original, uh, well, originally released. Hmm. And here's Iria, the anime series, which is a six uh, episode OVA series, which is really nice. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I, I'm, I'm digging it. Like, it's really good. It's old school anime. Like, we're talking about golden era anime. Type, yeah, so. like 70s, 80s, or no, 90s? More like late uh, late 80s, early 90s. Okay, so, so not, not a ton of CGI stuff? No, not okay. at all. All animation. That's cool. Serious business. It's six episodes. I believe the episodes are around uh, probably like 30 to 40 minutes a piece. I can't really hmm. remember. But a uh, very cool series. And it's based off of a movie that came out. But I'm more into the anime, so and the game, and the game's pretty cool too. Even though it feels kind of floaty with the way she controls, but other than that, if you get used to it, it's still a fun game. The music is what really is it? helps to stick out. So yeah, it's funny you're showing anime. I wasn't planning on showing any anime, but I I'm going to because All right. I'm excited. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because I bought this recently, and and it, it's in my DV, or my Blu-ray player. Have you watched Black Lagoon yet? No, I heard Dude, this though. Black Lagoon is so good. Speaking really? of, yeah. So I would not see this as like, well, this is this is old school anime. I mean, it's it, I believe this was made either in the late eighties or I'm sorry, the late nineties or early two thousands. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of how Cowboy Bebop is paced. You know how Cowboy Bebop is like, every episode something's happening. Right. Uh, this is one of. The few anime, now I like anime, but this is one of the few anime that I watch where I literally have to watch the next one, and the next one, and oh, the next one. Oh, it pulls you in like that, okay. Really pulls you yeah. in like that. It doesn't It doesn't get, uh, you know, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't have long periods where nothing happens. It is really cool. So it, it's a bunch of mercenaries that are for hire, um, going and take, and it's messed up, it's violent, they're swearing, there's, it's definitely adult. It's really cool, though. Oh, man, I hope it is. 
I'm wishing this is on Netflix right now. Yeah, I'll have to. Like well, I, so this comes with the Blu-ray and the DVDs, and so uh, maybe I'll just let you borrow it. So, okay, cool. Yeah, man, super uh, 20, good. Twenty-four episodes. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So bingo. All right. Anyway, uh, I didn't expect to show any, but yes, I've been watching that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go with some Game Boy games here. Uh, yeah, Cutthroat Island, which is based off the movie. Right, right. Uh, if you remember the movie, it, it flopped, but it was it still was it, a, it's a decent movie. It's a decent yeah. movie. It just yeah. A lot of money went into it. And yeah, it was yeah. lost, but uh, yeah, it's enjoyable. Huh? I'll have to check it out. And uh, the game for the Game Boy, it's more of like a. It, it kind of feels like Prince of Persia in a way, but it's okay. like more like a like the old school Prince of Persia. Yeah, but it's like you, you, it's more like fighting one on one battles because I guess the Game Boy couldn't really handle too much uh, okay. at once. So hmm. at least what I played of it, That's and cool. uh, of course it got Ice Climbers. I picked this game up because my my friend Marcus he did a video. Never played it. You never played Ice Climbers? Not before? even on the NES. No. I played it once when I was a kid. And I picked it up because he did a video about a, a, a top 10 in, uh, Nintendo games in 1985. And he had this on there. And I saw, you know, I got to go get it. And I found it. I was going to have a plan on getting an yeah. NES game. And I found the Game Boy a classic NES series instead. So, uh, huh. Ice Climbers. Check it out. I've seen the cover a billion times. But I've, I've just never, never played it. It's one of those, you know? <laughs> well, it's like... Ice Climber, like, what, what is that? You know, yeah, yeah, like, I know. Like, it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really, like, pull you in. Like, what is that? Yeah. But cool game. All right, next up for me is a game that, uh, well, yes. you inspired me to get. Yes. That is uh, the Resident Evil Origins Collection for the PlayStation 4. And I bought this because, well, you know... Be, we, be, we talked about how Resident yes. Evil... The, the PlayStation 4 is a defined system to play most of the Resident Evil games on. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, you have to admit that, especially with the up-and-coming... It's Resident only missing three. The th like Resident Evil 3, correct? Only oh, and, missing, and, and only missing 3 and, and Code Veronica so far, but I think yeah. they're kind of under the books. Yeah, we'll sure. But uh, yeah. But this is cool because I wanted to, uh, I, I never finished the the uh, uh, Resident Evil Zero, I believe is what it is. It's it, the one on the GameCube. Yeah, that's the one where you're on the, in the train yes. in the beginning. Yes, and so, uh, so th that's primarily the reason why I bought this, but also it's such a great deal. I mean, mm -hmm. I think I got this yeah. used for 17 bucks. It's got two full games on it. Yeah, and you and can play it, them in 1080p. Yeah, they so. look amazing, so mm -hmm. yes. Dude, they did a very good job. I mean, the GameCube releases of the games look great, but man, those really... Yeah, you know, I, I like uh, I don't mind buying these kind of remasters if they're reasonably priced and if they put a little bit of work into yes. making them like look updated because mm -hmm. often the gameplay is still good, you know. And I'm not sure if they added it on here, but I'm not sure if it had the Wesker report on here, but maybe that's in another version. But hmm. uh, oh yeah, it has a all all new players Albert Wesker mode in here. So yeah, they really updated some Did stuff they? in here. Yeah, cool, definitely. So cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, playing some of that. All right. Uh, those of you say I never buy NES games, well, hey, here you go. I got a couple here. First one I want to show off is one of my favorites since I was a kid. Oh, right. Rainbow Islands. Now, this is the true sequel to Bubble on Bobble. Uh, plays uh, pretty much differently. Uh, you ride on rainbows. You climb a tower, pretty much. And whereas in Bubble Bobble, you kind of like go down to the next le lower levels. There's a version of this on the PSP. There's like a, yes, I have that one. Yes, yes I yeah. have that one. I love it. It's uh, like a collection of them, a bunch it, of them. Even though the music is not that great on that version, but still, it's Rainbow Islands, you know? Yeah. And, I, and I still love it to this day. So, yeah, Rainbow Islands. Okay. Uh, Kiwi Craze, which is actually was actually retitled. This is actually the New Zealand story. Uh, oh. You remember the, little, the chicken with the tennis shoes? Yeah, the, yeah I think John uh, Riggs talked about this in one of my videos with him. Yeah, yeah, this game is, this is, I had it before. I don't know what happened to it, but I bought it again. Uh, I must have lost it <laughs> or something like that, but... Uh, yeah, it's not really a common game you find in any like anywhere. So yeah, happy to have this back in Where my collection. Where did you get that? I got this from uh, um, Super Smash Games. Okay. No, 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 no. I got it from uh, Portland. The PRG oh. swapped me. Okay, you uh, did. Yeah, I got it there. And, yeah, <laughs> I was lucky to get it too because it was, he, the guy I had it was the only one that had it. So. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and next game here is a Castlevania. Castle Castlevania. The Holy Relics, and this is a a, a hack version, like a, a remake, like kind of like a yeah, homebrew, I would say. Yeah. Uh, very cool game. They actually redid the music. There's a level select, huh. so you go to different levels uh, in, in different order. You get super moves, and they just really did a good job on this. This really feels like a good Castlevania hmm. game. Uh, I can't really say too much more about it because I haven't beat it, beaten it yet. I got stuck. I got yeah. I got did. pissed actually, <laughs> but because I got stuck on the levels. But yeah, very cool game. Wow. All right. Uh, next up for me is a random find at, at like half price books. I was like, "What? What the heck is this? It's probably terrible." It turns out it's not. That is Spider, the video game on the PlayStation One. Have you played this? No, I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm just not into spiders, man. That cover it's, throws it's, me off. It sounds <laughs> stupid. I mean, Spider, the video game. However, this is actually a pretty fun game. I yeah. played it way more than I thought I would. So it's a 2.5D 
platformer. And so, you know, that's kind of like, like Klonoa, you know, where, where the backgrounds are all 3D polygons. Okay. But what's interesting about this game is that you're a spider and you stick to every single surface. So you, so if you throw yourself at a surface, you'll stick to it. You can walk underneath it, you can go above it, and it changes the gameplay up dramatically with that because you're, you're, you're going underneath stuff, falling down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. There's power-ups, there's enemies. It's a tough game. Um, what I like about it is that yeah. When you die, you can uh, you, you you can learn like like the enemies aren't randomized, so, yeah. so you, you can get through it. It's just a, it's a spider, dude. Like I, oh you, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know anything a rat like that has more than like four legs. It's like ugh to me, but I mean I mean it looks cool. It's a spider's like ugh. And I, I would say it's not an amazing game, but it was way better than I expected. It right, to be. right. So uh, you know it, it's a hidden gem for sure. And it's definitely an uncommon game because I don't yeah. I don't really see this. I, no. mean, I remember seeing it back when it first came out, but. Not after that, so wow. Yeah, I so and, and I think I paid five bucks. Cool, so. cool. All right. I know you guys will be excited for this. A fighting game for PS4. We got Dragon Ball Fighters. Hmm. Uh, this game is insane. Man. Is that new? This is new. This is came out. This is from our buddies Arc Systems that oh. made the Guilty Gear ser series. Uh, okay. They decided to make a, a Dragon Ball Z game, and thankfully they did because they don't. I, I always felt Arc Systems doesn't get a lot of credit for their work. I mean, you see how Guilty Gear oh, actually looks. That's beautiful. one of the best looking fighting games yeah. I've ever seen. And, you know, I don't know how sales were on it, but I don't hear people talking about it. But now they kind of branched over and did this Dragon Ball game. Now I think this is going to put them hmm. on the map finally. This game is like three on three battles. Okay. Uh, insane fighting action. And lots of fun. Easy to get into if you even if you're not a fighting game person. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can't say nothing. Like, like I don't... It's hard, it's, hard, it's, it's, hard, it, huh? it's hard to sum it up, man. Okay. It's just really a good game. So, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, check it out. I, you, I need you to... Watch, to... Have you ever seen Dragon Ball before? No. no you, know, you know why? Because... I get really intimidated by some of the anime that has like hundreds of episodes. Episodes, yeah, it, and seriously. Because I know I'm, I'm probably not going to watch them. You know yeah. what I mean? And a lot of it's filler too, and it's, it right. can get boring. I've heard so, that, yeah, yeah. definitely. So, uh, yeah, but uh, hmm. maybe you'll stick with the movies or something. But like that. or a fighting game I can jump into. You yeah, know, definitely. I don't, I don't need to know all 400 episodes or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. All right. Um, next up is another game I got at the Portland uh, Swap Meet. And it was simply because somebody pointed out that this is a sequel, so it's called, uh, what is it called? Radical Psycho Machine Racing. It's the sequel to hmm. Rock and Roll Racing. Really? Yes. You see... I had no idea, and someone was like, oh, well, you like racing games, that's I, I, a sequel. I wonder why they changed the name. I mean, do you think that they changed it because it didn't sell well and they wanted something more catchy? Because no I one knows no about idea. sequels I because know. they changed the names of these I, games. And, and what is that? That name is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <this is sorry. laughs> I know. And so it's one of those where I was I was digging through you know, Super Nintendo games, kind of going, okay, what is interesting here? You know, It wasn't a very expensive game. And again, when someone pointed it out, I'm like, oh, yeah. And it, it's very much like rock and roll racing. Really? I would say... Um, it didn't, you know, it didn't have the, the the same cool soundtrack, of course. So, I, I was missing that a little bit. Right. But overall, it seemed like it was a pretty good racing game. So, okay, cool, yeah, cool. A new Super Nintendo game. And it's fairly cheap right now, or very cheap. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, next game here, another fighting game. Dreamcast got Breakers. Hmm. Uh, this originally came out on the Neo Geo, I believe, and it was in arcades. And on a Neo Geo CD, I don't know how they got it ported to the Dreamcast, but uh, is this a new homebrew thing, or, or is this a is this? It's uh, there's some kind of program somebody created for the Dreamcast where you can run Neo Geo games on it. Okay, so I mean, is this an official release? I yeah, it's an official release oh, for Play. Oh, okay, so yeah, I got it from there, and uh, it's a cool fighting game. I mean, seriously, it's old school like hmm. animate like you know like drawn sprites yeah. and everything. So uh, very plays pretty fluidly. Uh, I, I got the gist of it, you know, because most fighting games uh, are universal, you know, like they all kind of play the same. You just got to know certain motions. Yeah. So it, it was fun. Hmm. I, I would have never, I would have never known about it if it never had gotten ported to the Dreamcast, though. So that, oh, yeah, that's cool. nice looking. All right, all right. Next up for me. Yay! I know. So you <laughs> told me about Bleed and Bleed Two. Yep. This is the the limited edition from uh, uh, East Asia Soft. Yep. I always want to say Play Asia, which I think they're, well, they're, they're associated they're, they're, with. Yeah, right? they're, they're, they're together. Yeah. Um, you told me about this probably about a month ago. You're like, mm -hmm. dude, you got to check out Bleed. And I was like, uh huh. You know, yeah, I mean, I just didn't yep. have time, right? I finally popped this in. Yep. You were not kidding. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah, so I love, it, I love this game. So uh, it's it's a run and gun platforming game, but it's also like a twin stick shooter because mm -hmm. you know you're you're aiming, aiming a different yeah, which I love. 
I mean, I love that, that style. And it's also two players, so yeah. uh, two people could join in on the fun. Yep. Uh, cool boss battles. I love boss battles in these types of games, and the music yeah. is really good, too. The music, especially for the first game, yeah. I love the music, and it's just hilarious, you know, the, the cutscenes that you get with it. Uh, very well-made game. The only thing I noticed, too, because some people might get confused, because the it says Bleed, Bleed 2, like that. They forgot to put the... Uh, the and there right now, right so. this comes with two full discs yes. in here so it's, mm -hmm. it's two full games in one limited edition so yep um super cool i mean i was just so happy to get this uh, it comes with the soundtrack as well yeah you guys will love it yes pick it up <laughs> all right so uh so i got double dragon four from a limited run uh oh nice people try to bash on this game so all just not as good as the other ones but if you compare i mean this game came out back in the day when the other ones did this will be the best double dragon uh for the nes ever and i think it's better than the, the other games as well um if they went with more of the uh eight bit look with it of course okay uh, i think maybe a lot of people wanted it to be like maybe upgraded but that's okay oh okay is it was that the complaint basically that that was a complaint. The the uh, battle system was a complaint. Oh, uh, really? Some other stuff I can't remember. A lot of people were saying. I think Riggs was talking about it too. I enjoyed it, uh, but more. But I'm more of the arcade games anyway. Yeah. You know, I played Double Dragon arcade games first before I played the NES eight bit games. So, dude, great cover. Yeah, great. And it's a reversible cover too. So oh, check is this it? Out. Yeah. You can do this if you don't like that cover. Hey, you can switch to that. Ah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool, huh? Yeah. So yeah, Double Dragon Four. Uh, I had to get a physical of it because, you know, I have all the other ones. So. Well, and, and you're such a fighting game fan. I mean... Anyway. I am, man. And, you know, I just... Yeah, I just want Double Dragon to come back, dude. Hmm. They, they've been gone too long. <laughs> all right. Well, this next game is awesome. Officially. Okay. Oh, It's called okay, Awesome. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm going to show you a bunch of Amiga games. So, at the Swap Meet... Uh, I'm always looking for big box PC games. I consider wow. the Amiga to be a PC. It's a personal computer in the mm -hmm. 80s. Uh, that's kind of how we called them. But uh, this company, uh, Cygnosis, I believe that's what it is, um, basically what they would do is they would create these arcade shooters, platformers, and just, just use some of the most amazing artwork. And so I have four of them here. Mm -hmm. So check out, so, so I have Awesome, Anarchy, uh, uh, um, Aminos, which is kind of a weird sort of name of a game, but look Whoa. at that cover. Yeah, it looks like a a, a, a plane as a dinosaur. Ooh. Yeah, it, it's like an album cover. I mean, it, I mean, mm -hmm. and then check out this one. This is Shadow of the Beast three. Oh, so these are all Amiga games that were at the show. Actually, this guy had a, a bunch more. These were only the ones that I could really afford. He had to hit some hit some Amiga games that were worth hundreds. The art on these are amazing. Yeah, dude, it's amazing. Seriously. And so, um, like this one right here is kind mm -hmm. of so Anarchy is kind of a, like a Defender style game. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome. I haven't played yet, but it looks like it's kind of a shooter. Um, it looks top, awesome. Top down. Yeah, it looks awesome. Okay. Uh, I believe this is another shooter. Yeah, this is uh, a, a me. Am Am Amnos? I don't know. I'm probably not. I'm not. I know I'm not saying. I know that they, right. they come with some weird names sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, and you know, uh, and then also Shadow of the Beast three. But look at that cover, dude. That's sick, dude. Isn't that no. amazing? Yeah, man. Yeah. So it seems like that you don't see this type of art anymore these days. Like this kind of yeah. like a I don't know like this. And what was cool about this company is that yes, they had this crazy art on the covers, but they backed it up with really great Amiga artwork in the games too. Mm -hmm. They were known for really pushing the boundary for for graphics on that computer. So anyway, so you know you don't run across Amiga games at these expos hardly yeah. ever. And this guy had, I mean, he had three times as much. Mm -hmm. uh, I could, I wanted them all, <laughs> but I couldn't afford them all. Yeah, so. yeah. But yeah. That, that was pretty neat find. Yeah, usually when we go to these events, you know, we take like a little bit of money, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I didn't have that much. <laughs> <laughs> good. I, I, I actually, I was holding it in my hand. I forget what game it was, but it was $180. And uh, I was just like, and it had an awesome cover. But I was like, I can't, I can't justify that. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, know you, you spent over like maybe a, 50 to a hundred dollars for a game you'll have buyers remorse no oh matter what. and i rarely yeah. do that i mean yeah. most of those i think were 15 to 30 dollars mm -hmm. which again for an old me game that's 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 what i want to pay right you know i get you yeah cool so next game's here uh oh, yeah. whoa guys okay so unepic i got this from uh, east asia soft uh, did you play that yes dude okay it's it's freaking hilarious man so it basically is funny. The, the dialogue will crack you up yeah the dialogue keeps you going but not only that it's like a uh, like a uh, what you would say a metroidvania type game right uh you can zoom in on the screen or you can zoom out to see the whole area and you light torches the areas you've been to so they'll always yeah. be lit when you go through them again you'll know you'll kind of know where you're at uh where you backtrack through it by the lit candles and basically it's like a 
Yeah, just like that, a Metroidvania type game. You're trying to, I don't know, the guy gets stuck in some kind of world and he's trying yeah, to... He's a D&D &D player with his buddies. And mm -hmm. so there's a lot of uh, old school D&D &D kind of jokes. In, right. In, in, you know, in, I got in, some of them, but some of them are like, huh? Yeah, okay, yeah, me cool, too, I know. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, really really well done game. I was very impressed with it. I can't wait to play. I was playing it last night and I, I got to like playing it too long. Oh, did you? Over. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, very cool game, Unepic. Check it out. And next game here, uh, Vesta. Vesta is what what I like about this game already is like it has a comic book feel to it, like the way it shows oh, the story. Really? It shows it comes with a comic yet. book, and oh. also it comes with the uh, well, it comes with soundtrack too. Wow, yeah, a bunch but of but it's told in the comic book format where you just read the dialogue and it zooms in on a certain scene. Okay, and the music is really cool in the game. Basically, you walk around with your robot. At least what I played of it because I'm still in the beginning stages of it. You're trying to get out of this laboratory. You get a robot. You're moving blocks. You know, it's like a puzzle uh, venture platform game. Maybe hmm. okay. maybe that's how I describe it. Very cool game. Uh, I haven't played it yet, so... Huh. Yeah, I'm excited to play it, man. It's like, I, I just love the whole feel of the game. It just, you kind of like... When the game has good music, man, it really will drive you, too. I yeah. love the game a lot. And actually, the, the, I thought the graphics, at least in the screenshots I saw, looked pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hmm. All right, cool. Uh, survival Horror. Uh, I got this from Play Asia, East Asia Soft. Uh, man, if you like Survival Horror, this game is like... This. Yeah, seriously. Coma is, is, is Korean horror. And it's like, this kid, he goes to school... And uh, he's, he's trying to do a test and everything like that. He fails the test, or he's failing it. He falls asleep in class. And I'm like, who the hell falls asleep during the you test? You would. <laughs> I, maybe I would. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it's funny, though, because he falls asleep, and then he, he wakes up, and everybody's gone. And the mm. school's all, like, in his ear. It's like a Silent Hill type thing. So he's walking around, and all of a sudden, he sees a couple of his friends, and they're all terrified. Then he sees his teacher. Now, his teacher's like this hot, sexy-looking teacher. But when he sees her again, she's this monster with a knife, butcher knife, chasing him. And she's brutal, man. Like, you know, you'll be walking down. You can't, you have a flashlight in this game. You don't want to turn it on too long because they'll, they'll see you. So you're walking around in the dark. And then, but I turn on the flashlight in the gameplay footage and you hear her shriek. And uh, she, she just chases you and she doesn't run out of stamina. You got to run from her, hide from her. And it's just, man, it's brutal, man, because, mm. like, you have a stamina meter, so your stamina runs out, so you gotta hurry up and hide or just I'll have hide to give a shot, yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll like it, man. I don't yeah. know if it's a really long game, uh, but it's, it's definitely scary. So if you want to check out Coma. I have to say, I've been really I've been digging what East Asia Soft do. do. I mean, yeah. these these releases are legit. They're, yeah, they're packable I mean, stuff, like, man. For a price of like $24 to $29, yeah. you'll get like the game, soundtrack, a card, art book, a manual. A manual. I know. I love when you get a, when I see a manual yeah. in a game these days, I go crazy. You're like, it's also, like, the, the covers, do flips. They're, they're doing little things too, like they're just raised up a little bit, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I like that, you know? Yeah. Huh. All right. Cool, cool, man. Okay. Um, to, to do, to do. Oh, next up. Just a random Game Gear game, uh, Strider Returns. Have you played this? I have it, but I think I played it briefly on the Game Gear. I have the, the Sega Genesis version. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, it's just one of these random games I, I you know, digging through, and I was like, oh, there's a random Game Gear game mm -hmm. I, had, I didn't know. Um, it, it's, it is fun. So it's okay. a 2D platformer. Uh, you know, I like these games because they have that mechanic where you can climb and, and hold on to something. And that's a big part of surviving in this game. Mm -hmm. You can't just run and jump like a normal platformer. Right. It is all about sort of climbing and holding on, and especially in, in some of the boss battles and stuff like that. So uh, would I say it's amazing? Probably not. But, you know, it, it's a... <laughs> it, it, it's a it, the name sells it itself. You know, yes. Strider on the Game Gear. Let me look at that. You know what I mean? That's so. exactly what it was. And, and it wasn't very expensive. And so I picked this up and so you know i'm always kind of there are certain systems that i look out for that other people ignore like psp is yes. one of them all this yes. sort of stuff mm -hmm. and game gear is that so if i see something there's a lot of cool titles on the game gear i mean i remember yeah. i picked up a lot no one's looking at it still so and and what's cool about the game gear is that a lot of them are master system versions mm -hmm. and so so it's, it's kind of cool because we didn't play a lot of Master System games as a kid. At least I didn't. I didn't even really know about it. No. So a lot of the games are kind of new, you mm -hmm. know, for us. So, anyways. Cool. Another right little game. All right. Another fighting game. Uh, I got Tekken 7. Uh, Tekken 7, I, I have all... I've been following Tekken ever since it first came out. And the storyline of the Mishimas, you know, it's kind of... It, it goes through every game. So this one, it finally concludes their storyline, which is that makes this game pretty amazing for me. Okay. I, I like fighting games with story to it. And a uh, very good, well, fighting game. It, it's... I don't see any big difference between this one and like maybe the last Tekken 6, you know, a couple upgrades, special moves, maybe stuff like that. But uh, I love Tekken. I'm not uh, like a, te a Tekken player though. What, it, what makes Tekken different than say, you know, Mortal Kombat and all that? Well, Tekken is more, you could like, uh, it's 3D, so you could go oh. in the background. It's a 3D oh, fighting okay. game, so you could do like a, a lot more stuff. Um, 
it's very technical if you if you play on a championship type levels mm-hmm. like you get juggled to death in these games like if you get in the air and someone keeps keeps you up they'll just keep hitting you oh, okay you, yeah it's pretty brutal but anyways Tekken 7 <laughs> uh great for a casual gamer like okay <laughs> <laughs> um all right speaking of psp games uh at the swap meet i also looked and found a couple random PSP games I'd never seen before. And so I bought them because they're cheap. Uh, G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra. This this also came out on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 and the, uh, the Wii. It yeah. is actually not a terrible game. It's a it's a third person arcade shooter. And so basically you're, you're controlling one of the Joes uh, ah. going through these different levels and it you you hide behind cover uh there's melee attacks um it's again it's an arcade game so it's not super deep and uh but it also kept my attention i actually uh, yeah, played it way more than i thought arcade it was type games are i like because you can get in and get out of yeah. them you know so I, I need to pick this one up this looks cool yeah and then shaolin showdown so uh another game i was not familiar with this came out on the playstation 2 i mm-hmm. didn't realize there was a P, uh, psp version of it this is a four player melee uh battle game mm-hmm. so um you know it, it, kind of in an arena battling out c- capturing orbs upgrading your character uh is it amazing no <laughs> <laughs> but i think i paid like two dollars for it yeah so, you know we're giving it a try for that you know yeah, I, mean? I will give that a try again you know my psp collection now is getting to the point where i'm having a hard time looking over at it i'm having a hard time finding any games that come out. I mean, I know there are, mm-hmm. but you know, if I see one for a couple bucks, man, I'm gonna pick it up. So yeah, you know, the PSP is really seem like it's it's like the, the way of the Dreamcast. You know what I mean when it comes to like. A, and I'm always surprised that oh, there's there's another game I didn't even know. Yeah, about. exactly. Dude. I mean, like, it's amazing. Very cool, man. Yeah. So the GI Joe out of out of these, this is the one you would want to pick up. Okay. So and that one, the GI Joe's fairly cheap. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that was a five dollar game. Okay, cool, or no, cool. actually, I think somebody gave it to me. <laughs> oh, nice! Okay, <laughs> One of the cool. tables that, that we went to. That's uh, right. That's right. Over by guy. you. Okay. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. that guy. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Next game here. Uh, most of you probably played this game. I'm pretty yes. sure. Guacamelee. Yeah. On the PS4, uh, I thought this was a wrestling game at first, and then I played it. It's yeah. a platform wrestling yeah. game. It's a very cool game. Very well done. I played the first couple of levels, and I loved it. The music, yeah. the, the, the 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 humor in it. Oh man! Actually, my buddy Marcus gave this to me, man. So oh, Marcus, man. if you're watching this, keep it retro, man. Welcome <laughs> melee. So thanks again, but very cool game, guys. I want to get the physical version of that because I, I don't know if I bought the digital version or we got it through PlayStation Network, but I have it on digital. I, I didn't even know that there was a physical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, huh. you got a physical, so yeah. All right, cool. Uh, next up, another. Portland Swap Me pickup. That is MotorStorm Complete. So this is the first game, Japanese only. And the reason why I bought this is because, uh, you know, this game had a lot of DLC. Had eight. Wow. Eight separate DLC, not including all like the 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 skins and all that sort of stuff. So this is the version, and I think it's the only version that has every Everything single on thing on it. You see how America gets a shaft? I think, Dude, I think I we all, while we love a DLC, we want something like that complete on this. So is the game still in English too? Uh, mostly. Okay. Mostly. Still fine. I, yeah, and I was able to get through it. I mean, it's a pretty easy menu system anyways. Right. And uh, if I remember right, because I captured the footage for this as well, but I mean, I was able to just jump into it and start playing immediately. Yeah. So, um, again, having all eight DLC on the, di- blue, the Blu-ray forever was a must own you know must buy for me so okay cool yeah man. i was really happy about that actually there was a table there that just had a ton of japanese do you remember that dude yeah i remember he was the one who also it's the same table i got my uh, my hello kitty dreamcast at same yeah table. he had that guy also had a test system ps3 i know i asked system. you about it remember yeah yeah it was uh the test system uh, ps3 that he had there it was the uh, slim model so it didn't have backwards compatibility with ps2 games yeah. which would have been great yeah but uh yeah he had a lot of cool stuff he had a 64 dd drive that yep. was in the box in the box was some kind of special it was crazy this is a young kid too. yeah man. young like, kid and, it was and, amazing and he's not really a reseller because i was asking him like where did you get all this stuff he's like it's his private collection yeah and it was just a fraction of the stuff so he's really passionate about japanese imports mm-hmm. knows his stuff and so very uh, smart i mean i could have bought a ton of stuff at mm-hmm. his booth it was pretty cool cool uh, wow okay so uh next game here um this was I was trying to trying to capture footage with this game it was tough, but I could tell you mostly about it. This is Seven Sins, which hmm. came out in PAL territories. Um, this 
<laughs> man, this game is insane. It's a dating game, pretty much, where you play as okay. kind of like a gigolo, or uh, well, maybe he's not a gigolo, but this guy, he's trying to get the girls and move up in, on the ladder and okay. life. And you date the girls, you know, you sweet talk them, when you... Yeah, get them, get them to bed. It, it, it's oh, great. really? Yeah, you do all Does that. Does it go stuff. into like a like a, a hot coffee mini game where like you it, know? It goes into a, like a I can't really I, I can't really remember it, but it's like uh, you have to talk to them on the couch. You have to get them aroused, <laughs> and there's an arouse meter. So it's like <laughs> it's all it's cool. It's, it's a really cool game. I'm trying to picture you playing this, but I don't know if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's hilarious. The, the dialogue choices you can choose in this game is just, they're fun. I Me and Joe are going to actually do a, a review on this game. Oh, when we get totally, more into it. But totally. look at that cover, Seven Sins. You know, what I mean, you just. The, the huh. cover sells it alone. So. Yes, it does. <laughs> that is so awesome. Uh, another game I picked up. Yes, at the Expo. Oh, I'm so happy. I so believe happy you, you got this. Yes, you kind of made this happen, I, right? Cause I, I I saw that game and I told the guy, I said, "Hey, my buddy Jason has uh, all the games in the series except that one." Yeah, so you Shadow it. Hearts. So he held it, and then he he saw you, and then he hit you up, man. So I was yeah. happy you got you it. Gave me a very reasonable deal on this. This is uh, you know like all RPGs on the PS2, they're they're getting a little bit more collectible, right? Um, but yeah, having all the Shadow Hearts games was pretty awesome. Yeah, uh, and Shadow Hearts One uh, was the was the go to RPG before Final Fantasy X came out because uh, it came mm. out during when the PS2 first came out. So uh, yeah, very well done game. I, it's just. It has a it's it's kind of scary too in a way like it has like this dark yeah but you'll you'll, you'll love it man when yeah you get to well it. It, it and I know I mentioned this before it has one of my favorite battle systems at the time which is a judgment ring yeah. so so it it's a it's a timing thing where basically you know you, you start to attack and then you have these little zones that you kind of want to hit yeah. almost like a golf simulator really you yeah know, you know you know how like golf simulators like it'll build up and, yep. I mean and you have to kind of time your hits mm -hmm. and the better your timing is the more damage you'll do or yep. the more combos you do and once you get into these games and you kind of get the rhythm of it that is just so much fun like yes. it you, makes it exciting it makes it really exciting like you don't you don't burn out on combat you know you, mm -hmm. you look forward to it yeah so Always was, different. So thank you for hooking me up with this. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, so I'm down to the last three. Woo! Okay. So here we go. Uh, okay, I know I may get a lot of flack for this, but uh, I don't care. So here we go. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil Survivor PAL Edition. Now, the reason I have the original American version, but the reason I got this one was because uh, the PAL Edition has the gun con uh, function in it, which they took out of the American version. Oh. They took that out of the American version because of the Columbine shootings that happened oh, a little bit before. Okay. So... With American like teens during the time, they didn't want to take any chances. They took it out. Hmm. Uh, but uh, to be able to play with a gun is really a nice feature. Do hmm. I recommend playing with a gun? Nah, it's up to you. But I think Resident <laughs> Evil Survivor gets a lot of flack. It's actually a fun game. You know, if you don't compare it to the other ones, it has like that that Resident Evil like atmosphere. Does it? You know? Okay. Huh. It's more arcadey though. So uh, That's first, okay. person, first person, first person first person of you. Um, I like it a lot. So if you see Resident Evil Survivor at your local store, pick it up. You know, okay. tell him, tell him Reggie recommended. <laughs> Uh, okay, next up for me, I'm just going to power through a bunch of stuff here. It's it's a mix of, it's all Atari Lynx games. And some of these are because you donated some of them to me. Some of them I picked up. For his birthday. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, lately I did the buying guide for the Atari Lynx, and I hadn't really touched the system in like a year and a half, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in doing that, you know, I, I, I start doing some research, and I'm like, man, there's so many cool Atari Lynx games I didn't yeah, own. I saw that video when you did it, man. You were really pumped, man. So. Yeah, you know, and part of and one of my favorite things about that is that the games are fun and they're cheap, mm -hmm. generally. So there's there's very few expensive Atari Lynx games. They're usually five or ten bucks at the mm -hmm. most. So I'm gonna just go through them really quick here. Uh, and I haven't played some of these because he literally just handed me mm -hmm. these like an hour ago. Uh, Super Squeak, that's weird. Uh, Road <laughs> Blasters, which is an arcade game that was awesome. Yep. Supposedly we love. really good on the Lynx. Uh, this is a game that I did cover in my video. Uh, I, I just didn't have, I had to borrow it. So mm -hmm. now I own it. It's Zar, Zar Lore Mercenary. This is a, uh, a top-down shooter. Okay. Really cool game. I think it only came out on the Lynx. Uh, APB, which is another arcade game. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Ishudu? 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 I don't know how you pronounce that. I, Ishu, Ishu. Yeah, I, I know. I'm not going to be able to do it. I don't know. <laughs> um, Blockout. I have no idea what this is, mm -hmm. so we'll have to play that. Gauntlet, another arcade classic. Nice. Here is a really fun game. This is Clax. So Clax, I believe, oh, Clax. was an arcade game. Mm -hmm. This is a... 
kind of like a Tetris puzzle-like game. What's cool about it though, it has a mechanic where, unlike any other, where you can actually hold on to the pieces for a while. Mm -hmm. And so there's a bit of strategy in holding on to pieces. And then uh, at the, the expo, I picked up box versions of Tournament Cyberball. Nice. <laughs> this is a futuristic football game, uh, including plays that you can choose. And then also another arcade game. Rampart. Uh, yeah, Rampart. So this is a real-time strategy puzzle shooter game. And it's actually really fun on the links. So Okay, cool. Man. So yeah, thanks for hooking me up, dude. Appreciate yeah, no it. Problem, man. Man. I know. And you know what's nice about the Atari Links? They're easy to store. Yeah, the way <laughs> they don't take <laughs> yeah. up any room. <laughs> Here's that one. Cool. Thanks, dude. All right. So uh I have just two more games. Yeah, me too. I'm um okay. down to the last two. So uh uh another pal game, Yo Yo's Puzzle Park. <laughs> now uh by the time of this video, this game kind of plays like a, a another bubble bobble game in a way. Okay. I didn't get to play that much because I was trying to capture footage for it, and it wouldn't. It just power games are tough to capture footage. So, for. so you're you're putting those into your PS3 or PS no, or PS1. You're okay. So, oh, okay. And then I uh, there's there's a disc you can use it from my uh, to make it into like American. What was NTCS or yeah yeah okay, and uh, it just wasn't working properly. It wasn't capturing it so. Uh, uh, but anyways, I'm wondering if that would work if we put that into a uh, a, a test PS2 or a test PS3. Uh, a test PS2, uh, n no, because it just emulates the other uh, system how yeah. it would play on there. So okay, <laughs> yeah, PAL games are weird, man, because it just yeah. because of the hertz difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but very cool game uh, from what I got to play of it. Uh, just happy to have it because I've been looking for this game for a while, man. Every time I buy it, the seller wouldn't sell it. I mean, they wouldn't ship ship it. Oh, really? So, yeah, it happened three times, huh. and my buddy Jimmy finally found one, a legit one, and he, he sent it out to me. So Jimmy, thanks a lot for that, man. You know, I was looking for this one. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad because I almost gave up on buying it, man. Sure. I, I was so annoyed because by the time I I, I catch on the games when they're when they're cheap, but the longer you wait, you know, because other people catch on to them, then it starts to raise in price. So yeah, man. But, yeah, three times. That's annoying. Yeah, dude, I almost I was gonna give up. <laughs> All right, and then another game I also got at a Portland Retro Swap Meet. Uh, this is a really interesting one here. So I've been going after a lot of the Infocom adventure games. So this is called Journey. This is one of the first games called Journey. Uh, the Quest <laughs> Begins. I believe this came out in 89 or something like that. Anyways, and so I, I've been going and trying to collect some of the Infocom games because they made a lot of those text adventures. What's really cool about this game is that it's not just text, it actually has graphics in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it has support for the mouse and joystick and unlike so many of these other games, you don't actually have to even use a keyboard. You can you can select your words with your mouse. And oh, okay. so, so it's actually pretty beginner friendly. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this game, it's the very last game that Infocom ever made. So they oh. ba basically they got shut down. They, and they continued on in name, mm -hmm. but as far as a developer, that's the very last game that they made. Oh, okay. So finding a copy of that was pretty cool because it's it's a bit uncommon. Okay. Um, wow, dude. Yeah, it's a pretty neat. That's the Amiga version right there, and um, can't wait to try it. I like the idea of being able to select the words and not have to just kind of guess, you know. Right, so right. That was what was really hard about those old text adventures. You typing it, typing it out, you know. Words. Yeah. So it, <laughs> it, it, this is a kind of a cool find. All right, my last item here pretty much my holy grail that I've been looking for for a lot of years. Uh, oh, it's been almost, okay. uh, well, it's 2018. I've been looking for this since 2010. Mm. And, uh, and that is a uh, Rapid Reloaded uh, for the PS1. This mm. is a running gun shooter, okay. uh, like a kind of like the Metal Slug games. And this is a pop, this is a European so version, which is in English, you know, so uh, very mm. uh, hard to get, you know, very uncommon. Uh, I had the Japanese version of the game, but I wanted this one just so I could like read some of the dialogue yeah. in it. And uh, yeah, it's just a very well well, well done game. It's, it's by a Media Vision, the people who did uh, the Wild Arms games. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it's Media Vision. What's, yeah, what's I think it called? I, yeah. That sounds about right. So that was one of the first games that I know of on the PlayStation One. But it got denied in America because of Sony's uh, uh, Amer America Sony's like against the two D two D games. Oh. They didn't want them to come out on the system over here, but everybody else got them fine. So. That's so dumb. If a, if a game is good, a game. I mean, we know that now. Yeah, right? they, you know, they, they were trying to push 3D on everybody, yeah. but 2D was still great. You know, what yeah. I mean, it still is to this it, day. It, I mean, at the pinnacle, really, at that time, they knew how to program for it. Mm -hmm. They knew it made good gameplay, and and the, and the hardware was powerful enough to have really big, colorful sprites. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So it's a shame we got we almost we missed out on a lot of 2D games because of that policy. 
Yeah. Uh, they almost tried to cancel out Mega Man, the Mega Man games, but people were able to <laughs> uproar we're gonna, that. Yeah, we're going to like storm their headquarters or something. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Huh. My Holy Grail item. Finally, after all these years. Happy to have that. All right. And then the, the final item for me is a really cool game. This is uh, the Motorhead edition of Victor Varan. So... Full disclosure: This got sent to me by, I believe, the marketing department for this 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 uh, this game. So, Victor Varan is kind of like a it's a top down Diablo game, uh -huh. and and that came out, and then they then they hooked up with Motorhead, the band, to do a version of it, like like a DLC, mm -hmm. and so that's what this is. So it comes with a T-shirt, which I thought was pretty awesome. Comes with <laughs> a bunch of, I mean, if you're a Motorhead fan, this is kind of amazing. So. Uh, pictures of Motorhead live in concert oh, and behind the scenes. These feel like real photographs. I don't know if this nice, is taken dude. from like a private collection. Pins for your leather jacket, okay. if you want. A uh, copy of the game on the Xbox One. So it's on other systems as well? It is. And it, yeah, PC and, and PS4, I believe. Okay. Uh, a patch for your heavy metal jacket. Mm -hmm. uh, here is, oops, here's a DVD, which is the making of it, and some other stuff on there as well. Um, and then uh, a code at the bottom here that I'm not going to show you, but um, <laughs> just just a love letter to Motorhead and heavy metal fans. This never happens, you know what I right, mean? Right, right. Like, how often do, do, I mean, I wish it happened more often, but it'd be cool if more games would have like an Iron Maiden edition mm -hmm. or, you know, a Judas Priest edition. I mean, <laughs> it, that seems like such a 90s thing, you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so this is a really cool thing to add to my my game collection. There you go, man. Yes. Anything that comes with a t-shirt, I'm a fan. I know, that's the first thing I saw was a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. sold already. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, dude, that's our pickups, man. Yeah, yeah, we, we powered through another episode for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any anything you want to say, like, leave in the comments. Yeah, let us know. Questions. Some of these games we haven't played yeah. fully, so. Yeah, but, we'll try to answer some questions, that, especially about this one. I'm still trying to get this one to pull up properly on the TV, but uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, where can people find you, man? Uh, Radical Reg on YouTube and uh, Radical Reg on Twitter, so uh, I'll be there, so cool. hit me up. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and take care. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you. Watching and editing this video, I realize I need to lose some damn weight. <laughs> Oh man, now I know part of that is the camera. The camera was aimed up and pointed down, but oh, man, I hate that. Uh, I need to cut back on the beer and the Mexican food. And I love beer and Mexican food. I don't want to, but I need to do it fine. <laughs>